Connecticut Muzzleloaders presents... Part 1 of this video showed the pistol and how it performed. This part shows how it was designed and assembled. Using the 17th century Lorenzoni design for a gun with a rechargeable powder-filled firing chamber, and the 18th century design by Girondani for a shuttle to load the ball, these concepts were amalgamated into a 21st century version for a repeating smokeless powder pistol where you just pour in the ingredients and the gun makes its own ammunition. Let's cut away this computer model and peek at what's inside. The barrel, highlighted here in orange, is flanked on one side by a tube containing the powder and on the other by a tube containing the balls. Both tubes are contained within the pistol's foregrip. The shuttle, shown in its firing position, contains an igniter just behind the firing chamber. When the pistol is held muzzle up, because the ball pusher spring is loose, the ball pusher now rests at the rear of the shuttle, having been pushed down by a ball. When the shuttle is moved to its loading position, the spring forces the ball pusher up and it loads the ball into the barrel breech when the two are lined. At the same time, the powder can now drop into the firing chamber. At the end of the powder tube is a plastic washer held in place by a spring, which prevents flashover and prevents powder grain leakage. When moved back into its firing position, the powder-filled firing chamber is just behind the ball and the igniter contact is aligned with the arc source. When the charging stud is gripped, the power supply applies 600 volts to the conductor and the receiver, but there is a gap between it and the igniter electrode, so nothing happens. Yet. However, when the trigger is pulled, a starting pulse of about 10,000 volts jumps the gap and allows the main charge to cross with it and into the powder charge, igniting it and firing out the ball. Here are the parts all spread out. The barrel was cut from a 316 stainless steel blank, and the receiver itself is made in four pieces from high strength aircraft aluminum. Small Torlon balls will hold the shuttle a little distance away from the top and bottom of the channel, and a Picatinny rail is mounted to the top. The muzzle is threaded, and there are four ports which act as gas strippers. Embedded in the foregrip are two brass tubes, one for the powder and the other to hold the balls. The foregrip simply slips over the barrel with the feed tubes plugging into the receiver. The forward openings of the tube are now covered by a rotatable four cap grip which has limited motion allowing each tube to be fed separately. The barrel shroud is screwed into place holding everything together and preventing gas and particles from the ports from injuring the shooter or bystanders. Note that this is not a moderator, only a barrel shroud. The shuttle is also cut from 7075 hard aluminum. When the shuttle is pushed in, the spring is depressed, moving the ball pusher forward. This little wedge gives the ball a final push into the barrel. The adjacent firing chamber holds less than a grain of powder, and the igniter electrode goes all the way through to the back. The shuttle fits closely fore and aft but there's a small top-to-bottom spacing which allows any leaked gas to escape. Inserting the shuttle lightly compresses the gas seal, and next the powder tube spring and plastic gasket are put into place. Finally, the shuttle end cap is screwed into place. As the shuttle is moved back and forth, you might glimpse the rear of the igniter when it's in the far left firing position. The last step is attaching the insulated bushing which holds the contact to the grip power supply. The little spring at the end will mate with the hot connector of the igniter coil. 
The hollow grip contains the power supply. A CFL inverter output is rectified to direct current which is stored in the two capacitors. When the grip switch is depressed, current flows from the battery in the base to the inverter. It also activates the trigger switch. In the center of the upper grip is the ignition coil where the receiver spring makes contact. The receiver is simply slipped into place, held in position by the coil and connector. A single screw in the base locks the parts together. The grips are held down by three small screws and are not normally removed. Lastly, add your favorite optics. This one is a dual red-green unmagnified dot sight. Well, here's what it was made for, plinking cans or even indoor shooting. For more details, please visit the website, and if you haven't already done so, see part one of this video.